Nuggers. Happy days are here. Pies. It's myself, Jay, and Steve. All right. And we're back once again, but this time we are doing a sneaky Brucey bonus review of WWE Night of Champions 2014. September 21st, 2014, from the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee, it's Diet Mountain Dew presents WWE Night of Shilling. Holy yeah. fucking shit. Yeah. Christian was on the pre-show. He had a peep show talk segment with oh, Chris okay. Jericho. Uh, he's healthy, by the way. There's no Why reason he not he's not wrestling. wrestling. Mm. Isn't he one of your better wrestlers in the entire company? And my boy. Although he might be too big to be my boy now. Yes and yes. Um, he was there with his guest Chris Jericho and he was interrupted by Randy Orton. Meh. Yeah. Well, 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 well. Everyone look. It is Canadian cool, live and in person, or better yet, it's like a, uh, who was it, who was it? It's like a real life Terrence and Philip. <laughs> or, or even better than it? that, it's, uh, it's the Canadian version of Brad and Angelina, only which one's Brad and which one's Angelina? Right, first up is the tag title match. It's Jimmy and Jey Uso versus Gold and Stardust. Before I start this, Gold and Stardust assumes that their last name is Dust. It's Dust, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I will say you should make sense of it by saying it's Gold hyphen and Star hyphen Dust. Yeah, yeah. Which obviously is just thrown out the window when they're called the Dust Brothers. Obviously. In the weeks prior, the Dust Brothers... He's turning heel after they didn't win the tag titles, thanks to a count out due to Jimmy Uso's bad knee, and they attacked the Usos, being poor sports. The Usos themselves have been tag champions for about eight months, but since there's only about five tag teams in the division, there's not much competition. They've had a bad run. Didn't they like have matches with the Wyatts for like four months straight, every Raw, every pay-per-view? Five tag teams, Steve, name them. Uh, Usos? Yes. The Dust Brothers. Yes. The Wyatts. Yes. Fucking bullfighter guys. Oh, that's six then. Oh, shit, I have to get two more now. Yeah. Uh, there are two more? Bam, 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 bam. Oh, fucking Ry Baxo. Yes. And uh, Big Show Mark Henry. Oh, I don't <laughs> they tied for about two weeks. <laughs> like. <laughs> They're probably going to have a feud now. Uh, Steve, do you like the Usos? I think they are very good wrestlers. Uh, I think that their matches get over. They're good at the moves, but that's about it. I don't think they have a character. I still really can't tell them, like, tell, what you know, what makes Jimmy different from Jay, except for once it says Jimmy. So, yeah, like, they're a mixed bag. They're really good wrestlers, but as characters, they're really bad. Yeah, they're quite bland. And do you like the Goldust and Stardust? I love Goldust. I think he's having the best run of his career. I think he's he's in great shape. He's wrestling very well. After Black Rain, obviously. Meow, meow, meow. I think Cody Rhodes is better as Stardust than playing old Cody Rhodes. I think that's been a failure for like six years straight. Um, Do you not like Phantom of the Opera, Cody Rhodes? I did, actually. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like playing old oh, yeah. Cody Rhodes, I think it's like one of the worst characters in wrestling I wouldn't say I like them you know they're, they're, they're fine I think I will enjoy enjoy them more as heels so. I do like Goldust and Stardust and stuff but I don't believe Cody Rhodes as Stardust I think he's just doing his best Goldust impression yeah yeah I and see that obviously with his haircut as well he's just motherfucker Mike he's fucking mad looking his mouth is huge is it Mike Mate? is it yeah motherfucker yeah, he, Mac yeah he's just the nerd's best mate and yeah. it's just oh I <laughs> <laughs> can't see anything else yeah, I thought the teams work really well together you should you've been fucking wrestling each other on Raw and Smackdown for the last couple of months like. yeah. uh, but you know very good pace uh, their manoeuvres are very smooth 
Uh, Jay misses a ghetto blaster and then repeats it again. Another ghetto blaster and hits it. Oh, I thought it was great. And I love Cody took off his glove and he started slapping Jay with it. That was that was my favorite spot of the match by a mile. It was like, oh yeah, they're actually going with this heel thing, you know, because the past few weeks is like they'll wrestle their their match as baby faces and then in the post match they'll do a beat down. I was like, are they turning bad? But I was like, baby face doesn't take off his glove and slap the shit out of a different baby face. Really, really like that spot. Um, oh, so we get a flurry of dives and a gold dust tope and an Uso plancha. And then the finish sees Cody wins clean with countering his splash by holding his knees up. I really expected them to cheat, to have to cheat to win. Kane was like, oh man, I could learn a thing or two from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so if they cheated to win, they teased the slippery heel slope thing, but they didn't do it. Those these kids win clean and they celebrate. They were so happy to win those belts. Did you see them? They're so elated. There was like a really long celebration in ring, just cutting between them and the Usos being all dejected. Mm. It really made the title change seem quite big. Yeah, like it made it seem like more than it's been since the Usos actually won the belt. Uh, it annoyed me that the camera missed the big money shot with Goldust going between Stardust's legs with the boat had the belt. Didn't get the shot. Annoyed me. Um, Kevin Dunn, man. And at this point, with Goldust celebrating, you can see there's a big, a winner is you sign in the crowd. Oh, yeah. That's really awesome. I flipped out and my Twitter blew up. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so awesome. Um, I actually thought that as an opener it was pretty good, you know. It got the crowd pumped up a bit. But um, I've seen either this match or... Some some part of this match done a billion times. Like, mm. so on Raw the next night, Jimmy Uso hits a big splash on Goldust to win clean in a six man. The Usos and Shamo versus Dust and Cesaro. So uh, wonderful parody booking there. You gotta get them people over, Jay. That's uh, Vincent James McMahon, Vince's dad. That's his booking. You win this week, I'll win next week. You win next week, and then I'll win the week after. <laughs> and no one gets over. Oh yeah. Uh, then holy shit, shameless advertising. Ziggler and Truth have a backstage interview sponsored by and literally both holding the beverages. I'm not saying their name. Fuck you, you're not going to blog. Waving it about, label facing the camera. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, fuck you, whoever bought the network, paid 10 bucks. But fuck you if you paid pay-per-view $55. This is how they're going to uh, get some of that network money back. You know, they've been doing it for months now. You, you Like the... Sonic Burger and In and Out and Wendy's and all that shit like some of the worst ads ever. It's not even video format. Like we're just gonna cut to an ad for thirty seconds. This is they've integrated the ads into the show. Yeah. All right. Fucking next match is a U.S. title. It's uh, Sheamus versus Cesaro. What do you think of his theme? Beep ba beep ba. It's a fucking. It's awful. It doesn't make any sense. Like, what's it meant to be? I get the idea of having an ambulance on... Like, like Ryback had the ambulance science a few years back, didn't Maybe. he? Maybe. Maybe he just came out with an ambulance, and that was the start of it, and then they went into the song. It sounded right. great. He should have kept it. It was like yeah. Scott Steiner or something. But uh, this one is, like, horrific. It doesn't suit the wrestler, his character, or the rest of the song, because... It kicks in as like bim 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 bim. It's terrible. Yes, Shamo here won the U.S. title back in the fifth of May on Raw in a twenty-man battle royal, last eliminating near defending champion Dean Ambrose. So he gets out of jobbing. Oh, see Shamo, he stopped dyeing his hair and he's letting his beard grow out. His beard is looking very scraggly, isn't mm. it? I like it. It's cool. See, he has normal bright red hair anyway, but he's been dyeing it electric red. To be more Irish. It's saying that... It, <sighs> Vince, right? <laughs> Have this Irish lad who needs to be more Irish. I mean, <laughs> he's fucking luminescent. He's a ginge. And he's got a, a fucking heavy Dublin accent. I mean, 
<laughs> can't get much more Irish than that. Like, was he going to come out on the bleeding Aaron fucking Gansey? <laughs> like, I just don't understand. You're plenty Irish, James. So this one was a big hoss fight. The two lads keep it in the ring and kick the bollocks out of each other. Working very strong and at a very good pace too. You see this, like, let's both get over by knocking lumps out of each other thing as well with Shamo and Barrett. Yeah. Because they were on the Irish-English Indies together in FCW. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, I really, really like it. I don't think we've really ever gotten the chance to, like, really talk about Shamo. Um... I think Seamus is a really good wrestler. I totally get why the fans hate his character. He's like like a mini John Cena. An Irish John Cena. Yeah, yeah. like I hate that character. I can't stand it. I think it's awful, but I read people saying that Seamus is a terrible wrestler. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's a really good wrestler. Uh, he doesn't botch. He gets his matches over. With the exception of the times when he wrestles like Randy Orton, he's generally one of the better matches on the card. So, yeah, I don't really get this. Sheamus is terrible. Um, yeah, so I thought this was a great match. Hard hitting and well laid out. Uh, no shortcuts. Particularly, you get a load of nasty forearm uppercuts. Yeah. And just thick clotheslines. Just, oh my God. Like So you get a nice double underhook by Cesaro with no help. And then an uh, iconoclasm which is where you pull both hands of the opponent forward and they bump from the turnbuckle to the mat. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it What's it called? Iconoclasm. I like the name. So the finish is uh, Cesaro wails on Shamo in the corner and the ref breakup is the chance Shamo needs to bro kick Cesaro and get the three. And he gets a clean enough finish uh, that saves face for both of them. So if you just have a great hard-hitting match, both guys get over, it doesn't matter if you lose. I really like this match. Nothing bad to say about it. So the broad kick wasn't great. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But that's only a small point. Yeah. You know? I, I thought that match was the best thing attached to the US belt for a long time. For a while, man, yeah. Kudos for Cesaro. Uh, he really brought the best out of Shamo as well. Cesaro's so good, man. It's It makes me upset how far he's fallen. You know, like, a guy was ready for it. He was ready to be moved up to the top and then they put it with Heyman and it just didn't work. They tried to make him a face and it's like, he wasn't a face. And uh, I don't You need know. to teach a lesson, Steve. Yeah. Let's see how you like being jobbed out for two years. I'd love you to teach John Cena and Randy Orton lessons. That'd be amazing. No, we got to bring you back early. <laughs> got to teach them friends a lesson about teaching lessons. <laughs> He's here. Awesome! So next up, it's an uh, Intercontinental Championship match. It's Dolph Ziggler, he's the champion, with R-Truth versus The Miz with Damien Mizdale. Love the gimmick. I think it's great. I think Sandow's great. He needs to shave that beard, man. They need to look as similar as possible. Lighten his hair, couple of shades, grow it out a small bit, and just be the fucking Miz. It's only for a couple of months and then you'll get to have your feud and maybe get a push. I just wish they went the whole hog. Well, you got to save something for the run, I guess. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it's so amazing. Absolutely love it. He's so good at it. He just comes out and points and gives out. It's brilliant. A gimmick after my own heart. Mm. Oh, geez. We get some arseholes that I won't advertise are on commentary for this match. One of them says they're performing at Honor the Troops thing. And Cole corrects them. It's tribute to the troops. Uh, fuck are they... Why are they on commentary? I don't even know who this was. Good. They know nothing. And they care not about wrestling. They can't even answer basic questions. Like, oh, who's your favourite actor? Uh, Brad Pitt? <laughs> you know, who's yours? <laughs> I'll also take Brad Pitt, you know. For fuck's sake. I quite like Miz's new Hollywood starlet douchebag gimmick. Like he's it's just good. just after coming back from filming Marine Four, he Which took is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not watching it, Steve. Summer Ray, yeah, but but you'll make me watch the Leprechaun. Yes, I hate you first, so much. <laughs> wrestlers first time films. Yes. Okay. Summer Ray doesn't count. She's uh, not the main character. She's a wrestler. That's all. okay, Steve. Let's watch it. Yes. You're falling into my trap. Oh no. <laughs> I actually do want to watch that movie. Really? I don't. 
I've had enough of Miz. I, I like I've seen what your acting capability is, and that's all I want to see. <laughs> well, I summarize. I don't even find her attractive. So no. there's no, literally nothing in it for me. I love Miz's fashionista jacket as well. You can only wear that if you're a prick. Uh, it, Miz plays the prick quite well. We're having Sandow as a stunt double is amazing, and he does it here and on Raw the night afterwards, where Miz will put in a figure four and he'll mimic doing the figure four on the outside as well. Love it. And when there's a headlock, he'll do the headlock motion on the outside. It's like, oh my god, this is just you are far better than the Miz. Yeah, <laughs> doing Miz better than him. Yeah. So the spin-off feud thing has uh, Dolph Ziggler. He has his stunt double as well, which is or truth. <laughs> which is kind of funny. Which is quite fun. I yeah. quite like it. <laughs> it's so absurd that, it, you know, it just works. But the Fed are going to run it into the ground. If they tag together, can they be called Ziggler, please? <laughs> <laughs> please make it happen. Wrestling gods out there, make it happen. Yeah, so there's another enjoyable match. Work rate Ziggler, Bumps and Miz, fair ball so keeps up with them. Their best match of the series. I mean, do you remember their first encounter? It was just botch after botch. Oh, it was really bad. Yeah. Uh, Ziggler hits a super kick. Uh, in the last match, the Usos hit a super kick. I don't appreciate how many people have stolen this move since Sean retired. Damn it, D'Lo. <laughs> Everyone. When, when's the last time you watched a match with the uh, young Bucks in it? Oh my god, with their 30 super kicks and th- the fucking indie rific no selling and stuff. It's like that moves a finisher, boys. Yeah, you understand that? No. Shockingly, The Miz wins it. Third pay per view in a row we've had a new champion. The Miz won it initially by eliminating Ziggler at Battleground. Dolph won it at SummerSlam. Miz wins it here. Sando is able to create a distraction. Miz uh, gets the skull crushing finale and pins him. Um, is it one of those things where we need a title to ch- like the world title isn't changing hands regularly so here's a mid card title and that'll change every month so every pay per view is special god if they're trying to make pay per view special through the mid tier belts you're doing it wrong <laughs> WWE <laughs> that's really wrong to me it's more because they don't know what to do with either guy or with either mid card belt they'll, they'll just change it on a whim like I really love Sando. When he started selling post match, he look at go over to the Miz, he started selling his head and looking over what are you selling? Go, oh I'm on his back. Just just incredible. He's great. Just, he gives it all. He he's like every, he's just oh just so amazing. And actually on Raw he got a little replica IC title belt as well, which I thought was hilarious. That's that's great. Um, so on Raw the next night they actually had a rematch from Night of Champions and we get a 24 hour title reign as Ziggler won it back in a much worse match actually the only thing good thing being Sandow in the match uh, R-Truth wasn't around though so since May in the last four months the IC title okay Barrett won it vacated due to injury Miz won it Ziggler won it Miz won it Ziggler won it a second. vacated it due to swagger <laughs> <laughs> I think um Threw him against the barricade and yeah. he separated his shoulders. Uh, you know the way there's certain wrestlers that when they're having a match and then they blank on their next moves and it's like, okay, I'll grab a headlock if I'm Randy Orton or if I'm Kurt Angle, I'll grab a waist and take you down. And it's like, what does Swagger do? Just full force boot in the face. Like He says he's done it. He's hurt so many people. Like, But uh, it's a shame because he's a really good wrestler. Really good wrestler. I still want him to wrestle Angle at some point. Oh man, that would... Yes. That's that's the match I've wanted for like five years. Backstage, big shit, gives Mark Henry new USA threads and a scarf and a pep talk about being a real American, fight for the rights of every man. Next up, it's Lex Luger versus Ludwig Borga. <laughs> Fucking hell. Mark Henry versus the Russian Bulgarian Rusev with Lana. Lana! <laughs> Lana! 
I should be back soon, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, new season of Archer. Hey, it's a night of champions where every match is a championship match, except this one. Yeah. Obviously, hold on, America <laughs> is a belt. It is a, it's more than any belt. The U.S. belt. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rusev here technically debuted at the Royal Rumble, but wasn't seen again until April 7th, post-Mania with Lana. He's been booked to squash opponents as the monster foreign heel, aka Yokozuna, Ludwig Borger, uh, Vladimir Kozlov, that kind of thing. Knocking off firstly Blacks, seriously, truth. That was crazy. Xavier Woods, Biggie Langston, then American specifically with Jack Swagger. And won the flag match against Swagger last month at SummerSlam. And now he's taken... It wasn't on. even a flag match. It was just a fucking match in which, after someone won, the flag dropped down. Yes. <sighs> and now he's taken on American Mark Henry. He stepped up to stop Mr. Drago. What did you think of the next couple of minutes? <laughs> oh my uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we had an out-of-body experience. Just my brain Ooh. left my body. Oh my goodness! I was furious at the end of a couple of minutes, <laughs> giving out. Lillian decides whatever an hour into the show to sing the national anthem. Oh my god! Fuck right off! Oh my god! I'll tell you why. What's the worst thing about this besides wasting a few minutes is that it's so shameless. They're saying support America. Supporting this wrestler. Support America by buying our pay-per-view, is what they're saying. You know? And they don't even play Rusev's national anthem. The Bulgarian-Russian national anthem. <laughs> the Bull-Russian? Yes. <laughs> um, so they can't get healed that way. Um, so it's all bollocks, really. All, although, in this day and age, you see fucking Miley could be going to prison because she twerked on the Mexican flag. Like, So you've got to be very careful about national pride and all that stuff but uh, this sickened me like I don't like the Irish national anthem I don't like the concept of a national anthem I don't think any country is better than the other they're just different and it's all militant bollocks every national anthem is I'm a soldier I'm proud of whatever fuck off to every national anthem ever Canada is about having lovely lakes that's true Uh, I think I remember I watched fucking football match years ago with Jamaica versus England and the black Timmy Mallet came out and sang <laughs> the Jamaican national anthem and it was magic. He was like, oh, Jamaica, land of the smoke. And I was like, oh, fucking wonderful. But yeah, just this, this shit would have bugged me if it was the 70s or something. I hate it. Uh, so this Rocky IV Cold War shit, he's, he's called a Bulgarian brute and now he loves Russia. Do you know what the word for a Russia lover is? He's Russophilic. Ah, oh, fuck off. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> and he was given a gold star to wear as the hero of the Russian Federation, um, which is this century's Sergeant Slaughter's Great American Award. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rusev starts with a wrestler pose. I enjoyed that. Nice. And he does a Russian leg sweep. Nice. Or leg sweep, as it's known. <laughs> or just a leg sweep. <laughs> uh, he outclasses Mark Henry to kick off and then fucking slow it down. Rest spot after rest spot. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I do like Mark Henry. And, you know, he's a, long, he's a long-term veteran, so he's quite over as well. But... His and his promos are very, very good. Mm. You know the one where he tricks Cena. That's um, a brilliant turn heel. Yeah. It, it was amazing. It was very, very good. But then you got to fucking wrestle. Yeah. And he is—he was never any good. <laughs> but he's much slower now. So it's always he's gonna, slower and safer. It's gonna end up being a terrible match. Like yeah. so, like he is bred to be a manager. There's no way he should be wrestling anyone. Like, fucking god awful. And you got to see it here. Because Rusev's had interesting matches before. Rusev, um, he's gotten a lot better since April, man. Like, he's getting better at a fast rate. For his first couple of months, he's wrestling jobbers. He's wrestling in matches that are lasting like a minute. And it's only the last two or three months where he's actually getting against, you know, upper mid-tier guys. And he's actually having decent matches. So, yeah, 
two thumbs up, man. Yeah, until this, like. Yeah. Un- until this, of yeah. course. And uh, 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 obviously, Lana is 10 out of 10. Like, she's, yeah. she's brilliant at what she does. Um, so this match is a huge drop in quality. Feels very variety show because they had the this one's the lumbering big men, and before they had uh, you know Ziggler bumping, and before that was a fast paced tag match. So mm. it's very very much every bit of everything in the pot. But this is shit. You've made the pay per view worse. It for having wasn't it a good match. I mean, like you know, you can say what you want about the angle and you know all that stuff, but the match it was poor. It was very poor. And we get the amazing sign. Make Raw four hours. See that guy? <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, can you imagine it? Yes. You know, when you take out ads, Raw's what, like two hours twenty? Can you imagine like a full three hour no breaks? Don't threaten me, like. That is torture. That is waterboarding, like. <laughs> So the finish of the match sees Mark Henry hitting the world's strongest slam, but can't capitalize. Rusev returns with a super kick. Fuck, and, and another one. Damn it, Dilo. And then another super kick. Damn it, Dilo. And Rusev, the rascally Russian, puts the accolade on Mark Henry. Uh, there's no way Henry can help him out in that position. Oh, wow, my God, when he puts him in it, just before he taps, Mark Henry, actually a single tear. Rolls down his cheek. Oh, wow. He actually cries and then taps out. I was like, holy sh... That is incredible. Is this guy, like, one of the best actors in wrestling ever, then? You know, because I've never seen... I'm going to Hollywood. (laughs) Vince. (laughs) (laughs) You paid me for ten years. (laughs) Oh, he... Whether he's good or bad or blah, 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 he's up there with Kevin Nash for getting paid. (laughs) And at the end of the day, that's what wrestling's about. It's about them monies. What we're saying here is uh, back in 96, uh, Mark Henry signed a 10-year deal, an ironclad 10-year deal with the WWF. Uh, and, you know, about a year in, they're like, shit, man, this is, he's terrible, let's fire him. And they couldn't because he's got an ironclad contract. So they put him in all the stupid angles trying to get him fired. And, you know, so there it comes 2006, it's time to roll around. Uh, let's go fire him and he says I'm going to Hollywood <laughs> and then they give him a new deal <laughs> I mean Ida just says like have fun being homeless out there mate <laughs> I mean Jesus Christ uh, <laughs> so he's been here for what 18 years now? yeah it's very impressive I don't think I've ever seen it in the history of wrestling before who is terrible for 10 years and then overnight suddenly becomes all right <laughs> it's it's unbelievable rusev's foreigner theme plays as there's a shot to a kid bored out of his tree uh, bad match first bad match of the night i i thought it was like an excellent finish it was a shocking and correct finish you know the hush falling out of the crowd and stuff kept the monster heel strong and yeah you will be fed to cena yeah. next year Oh, angle. Oh, that would be great too. It'd be, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Yes. Patriot gimmicks, you can't just acquire them. You have to have them all the time when you're not being pushed. Yeah. Uh, oh, on Raw, we actually got a rematch. Same match again. Rusev batters Henry in an even more boring match and a more lopsided affair and taps out again. Cole tries to make excuses that Mark Henry's injuries and that's why he lost. And... I think I hate JBL on commentary, but he gets on Swagger's case and gets on Mark Henry's case for being losers, nice. letting down 318 million Americans. It's just, it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what a cunt. <laughs> Next up, ooh, Seth Rollins, Mr. Money in the Bank, comes out. He's scheduled to wrestle Roman Reigns, but one day prior, Reigns needed emergency surgery, so he is unable to wrestle. So if you're interested, Reigns had an incarcerated hernia, which is when part of the barrel pokes through a weak part of the abdomen, which leads to obstruction. Like, that, that part of the bell gets squeezed, and if it loses blood supply, that's an, an emergency. Mm-hmm. Um, the surgery itself, it's an overnight job. Uh, he'll have a full recovery. Prognosis is excellent, but the thing is, wrestling like he's a huge dude anyway. Wrestling puts a lot of pressure 
you know, in, internal pressure on him. Absolutely. And external. So if he comes back under three months, he'll just pop his stitches and it'll happen again. Yeah. Uh, I actually had hernia surgery. Uh, God, it must be nearly 10 years ago now. Yeah, it was just after coming back from TNA, wasn't it? Yeah. And I guess I was. It's about, what, eight years ago? Yeah. And um, it fucking sucks, man. And, you know, of course, no heavy lifting for six weeks. But what that actually means is don't do anything for, like, three months. If you really want to be safe, don't go back to the gym or don't be bumping, like, or else this is a problem that's just going to keep coming back every couple of years. Like, he needs to be clever and he needs to not be a mark for the belt or the company and just be like, no, I, I need to heal. If you have plans for me for years down the road, give me three months off, bring me back at the Rumble and we'll be fucking gravy. Like Exactly. Like, he'll be well in time for the build to the Rumble. He'll be back. Easily. Yeah, so... Uh, there's no it's the shit part of the year so fucking yeah. leave it go you know the worst thing would be happening if he comes back wrestled for a couple of weeks ah I gotta go for surgery again I'll just fucking kill him stone dead kill him and you know like Vince uh, likes his wrestlers to be actually tough as like you know having a hernia doesn't make you not tough but I could totally see Vince going this guy's a fucking posse because he didn't break his elbow or something or yeah anything. you know there's something not shattered you know what yeah. I mean it's like man broken bones are the least of your worries yeah. when shit happens to your organs that's why it's called an emergency uh, so Seth is a gloater come in to gloat over the condemned man Rotoires warriors <laughs> and gloaters here <coughs> he insults Roman Reigns for ducking him gloats and demands his hand be raised and wins by forfeit it's very funny he makes the ref and when he counts to ten he's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> Before remarking he may cash in his WWE world title contract, he issues an open challenge for right now. And then a taxi pulls up and Dean Ambrose steps out and makes his way before Seth. Hey, that'll be €12.60, please, mate. <laughs> Fuck you. He doesn't pay his fare. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, they schmoz in the ring and in the crowd. Uh, Dean has a nice bowling pin spot where he does like a big jumping elbow off part of the set. It's only about a foot off the ground into Triple H and his goons and it all culminates in the ring where hired goons <laughs> subdue Ambrose oh, I, part of Triple H's uh, goons are Joey Mercury Jamie Noble not Funley where's Funley? I don't know yeah because Funley's amazing yeah. exactly so this was obviously plan B thanks to Rain's sudden injury but it's very odd they did have this similar Schmalz no match deal at Battleground two months ago and now here's another Schmalz no correct, match on yeah. pay-per-view oh man if they go to the next show and book a match and it doesn't happen again <sighs> kiss your network goodbye buddies uh, equally weird timing is how Rollins and Reigns had actually had a singles match on Raw six days before the pay-per-view uh, so he actually got the match with a clean loss yeah I have a feeling that this match wasn't going to happen either way like that Did- I think Ambrose was coming back either way and then Reigns was just going to move on to someone else or something. Obviously, the sudden injury means you couldn't work it into an angle. Like, Rollins would have uh, put Reigns in a, cur- in a curb stomp and put him out for a bit. would have been cool. Yeah. Um, so, Rollins, Rollins and Ambrose waste a bit of time and they reach the next point in the Shield breakup storyline. See you next month. God. Can they get past this feud of feuding with each other and go feud with someone else, please? It'd be nice. Next up, it's Chris Jericho versus Randy Orton. Skipped. <laughs> Instant fast forward. Okay, I'll tell you what happened there. Excellent. Uh, so, YTJ returned on Raw June 30th, attacking The Miz, and Orton is Randy Orton, and has been Randy Orton since Randy Orton. <laughs> As usual, Cole mentions Jericho was the first ever undisputed champion, and mentions watching Orton becoming the youngest ever world champion, which is an indirect admission that he watched Benoit. Do you mean? SummerSlam 2004. It's when oh, Orton won the belt. Oh, yeah, yeah, 
yeah. Remember that that was so spiteful. It was like Brock was the youngest champion ever and then he fucked off and they were like, Fuck you <laughs> Randy Orton like one month later, tears your belt for one month. That's really comfy. Uh was it Brock left the WrestleMania 2004 and then Randy Orton won at SummerSlam 2004 mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, Orton's entrance as expected is Glacial <sighs> holy shit he thinks he's the Undertaker fuck me man I, seriously I've probably said this a million times on the podcast but Randy Orton's entrance to me is X-Pac go away he'd change the channel fast forward anything to not watch this like yep both Jericho and Orton have black tights. So almost everyone on this pay-per-view has black as their primary colour. Usos, Goldust, Stardust, Cesaro, Ziggler, Truth, Miz, Sandow, Henry, Lana, Seth, Ambrose and AJ have black shirts and like jeans. Mm. Nikki Bella, Jericho, Orton, Brock. Damn it, 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 dealer. Fucking licorice all sorts here. <laughs> Yes, the best <laughs> sign of the night. What bar? Yeah. Just oh, <laughs> 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 it blew up. What bar? It's awesome. Because there's nothing to watch in the match as well. Yeah. So everyone's just scanning the crowd, you know. Uh, the match itself is quite disappointing. Jericho's current run has, in general, been disappointing. He didn't have great matches and he won the feuds with the Wyatts. And now he's in an all right match with Orton. And it's far below what both are capable of. So it's kind of a bit shit. Like, mm. They have a mild table spot. And you know the way Orton's matches? He only kicks into high gear after 12 minutes. They never kicked into high gear. He, there was no big Orton flurry. There's no reason for them to kick into high gear from a kayfabe point of view. Mm. This match shouldn't be happening. They're not feuding. Like. Fair enough. Mm. So yeah, it was just a boring stall match. And then it finishes, Jericho jumps off the top rope and Randy Orton does his mid-air RKO. Um, but unfortunately, it's the it's like his worst mid-air RKO. Like, Jericho hits the ground before Orton does, so it's not perfectly timed. Well, like, the, the average mid-air RKO, like his incredible spot, is perfection. It's amazing. Because Randy Orton, best timing in wrestling. Yeah. So... Anything less than that is, you know, it's disappointing. So, you know, it kind of caps off the whole match. So. Uh, Randy Orton is one of those wrestlers that drives me crazy. He should be the best wrestler in the world. Like, look at him. He's like six foot five. He's in amazing shape. Great look. Great athlete. Can do some great moves. As you said, he's got the best timing. He just doesn't put it all together. He's just boring. It's like he doesn't give a flying fuck. Like. But... Who won't be crocked in 20 years? And that's right. Randy Orton, Jeff Jarrett. And Kane. And Kane. <laughs> <laughs> WrestleMania 47, Steve. Oh, man, triple threat. Man. <laughs> Book <of Dano. laughs> So this is it. Jericho's third return stint is done. Jeez, that's it. He's gone. That's it? Yeah. It was a terrible return. It was the worst one, yeah. Oh, yeah. The feud with um, Wyatt never took off. Uh, man, Wyatt is just meandering at the minute he's going nowhere he wasn't on this show very slowly wasn't that's, on this show right, and he wasn't yeah. on Raw either wow it's a bit scary biscuits that uh, is scary biscuits indeed so yeah so see you at the Rumble Jericho or do you think he'll take longer off he's going on a tour right hmm probably the Rumble yeah probably that, the that's Rumble. still like four months away so yeah you cost me my match you wish I was dead and you broke my heart but that's okay because you want to know something at least I have JJ in my corner okay now wait JJ is your younger brother right yes let me guess you want to show us a clip of that too no I tell you what we can do better than that because we have your younger brother JJ Bella right here in the arena JJ come on out oh no Next up, it's the Divas Championship. Paige, the champion, versus AJ Lee versus Nikki Bella. Why? She's feuding with Brie. Because, Steve, this is the reason why she turned heel on Brie. It's because you're holding me back. I want a shot at the Divas belt. Despite you could have just asked for a shot at the Divas belt. Or, like, isn't the entire point of turning heel so that you get put 
in a gauntlet match so that you're number six and you know obviously booking AJ is got, gonna beat the five of them and so you have an easy win and it's no DQ for you but AJ can get DQ'd so no 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 I'm just gonna throw you in a triple threat match against two far superior athletes and wrestlers where you have no chance and you fucked over your sister for nothing see the problem is you turned heel but you didn't join the authority yeah so you don't get any perks of being heel you just you're, you know. I mean should she not just be with Rollins just to give Tim a boost he's got a hot sexy chick with him now who Nikki yeah you, you stay away from Seth Rollins don't drag him into it like. <laughs> I love Seth Rollins. He's awesome. I love his gear. He's got the best gear. Oh, his wrestling. his uh, snake Plissken shit. Yes, <laughs> awesome. So uncharacteristically, there are two women's storylines going on at the moment. Uh, Man games. Man games. <laughs> Lesbian pollen. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, one for the Divas belt and the Total Divas one you see here. So Paige and AJ are having this no heat weird lesbian pollen gimmick where they're both competitive and pretend to be friends and then obviously enough wrestling writing heavy undercurrent of lesbianism suggestive covers that kind of thing because every woman has to resort to sexuality to to get her way and to get the yeah. upper hand like every oh. every woman is part lesbian as well oh obviously. yeah and they're all mental yes I, I guess we should be grateful that they're not faking pregnancies to get their way. That's true. Yeah, wrestling has like a long-standing history of not liking women at all. Yeah, and, and Kurt Sutter as well. He doesn't write good women in his TV show. The feud between the most, the two most prominent female wrestlers in the world, two very solid wrestlers, are not clicking really very well in ring or as a storyline. So it's, no. it's pants-like. I actually think Paige has improved a lot. Since turning heel, she's uh, added, you know, that kind of nasty uh, knees on the ropes, a couple of uh, loafs to the face, which I I like. She seems to have more of a character now because I've been harsh on Paige because she was overhyped to the nines. Like, but uh, yeah, she's definitely after getting better in the last month or so. And I think AJ has gotten worse. I think she's she's so, so thin and so sick looking almost, you know? Uh, what do you think of the worst, obviously the worst segment in history, Growing Up Bellas oh. and the, the Jerry Springer segment and the immortal line, I wish you died in the womb. <laughs> Man. People will not forget this. This is the lowest point in wrestling has been in a while. Yeah. I'd also like to point out that when on our last show, when you asked me how Raw's been, and I said I haven't fast forwarded through things in a while, uh, at that point, Stephanie was like being really awesome as a heel. But yeah, so the the Bella storyline hadn't kicked off yet. But yeah, going up Bella's man, holy shit, that was bad. Did Jerry Springer always sound like Kyle's man? <laughs> like a what? fucking like an eighty year old Jew. You know that Kyle, I'm a, you know that that really nasally voice, because he when he was talking on Raw, he sounds like Kyle's mom out of uh, South Park, and I don't have a memory of him speaking like that for the rest of his time in TV. No, he is it just like when you get to a certain age, the fucking <laughs> beep kicks beep. in. <laughs> beep. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> standard triple tread one out of the ring and it's a one on one lazy shortcut bollocks match time from bell ring to page getting hoofed out 90 seconds 16 <laughs> seconds and then of course do a few spots page hoofs out AJ and those two can wrestle oh uh, nice armbar Nikki she applies a perfect armbar excellent and in true WWE fashion it's a wear down spot yeah you would think that that would be like Brie because yes. Nikki's going out with John Cena you know you'd like you'd like think that she'd be like the Nile armbar <laughs> you know where like puts the feet at the shoulder itself <laughs> and pulls the arm and pulls the arm <laughs> out it's <laughs> hilarious um, she also does have a lovely uh, Abyss's shock treatment as well I did notice that Mm. Nikki swings AJ but it's reversed into a Black Widow submission which was quite nice 
The crowd die for this match. It, it's so sad because AJ is great. Paige is great, character-wise as well, but just the whole thing is terrible. Like, their feud... Bad. You couldn't do a worse job with their feud. It's just no heat. Yeah. Which is 100% the fault of WWE creative. They deserve better, and they should be booked better. Do you know who else yeah. deserves better? The fans. The loyal fans who have... who've given you your 60 bucks for years, who have paying for the network. Just don't right shit you know what I mean put some thought behind it you know what I mean don't 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 change stuff that you booked last week pick three or four people pick a goal for each person and build to it it's fucking simple they can't do it you Uh, so the finish sees AJ gets the black widow on page who can't reverse the move and taps out and Paige wins her third women's championship. Wow. Just hot potatoing that shit around. It's like beating QS bat. No, not. Yeah. No, it's not. It's I see. No, sorry. So after AJ's CM Punk level 296 day reign as Divas champion, the title has been swapped around four times since Mania. So they actually keep the total Divas storyline and the women's title feud separate. So at least that's something. At least that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on Raw, the next night, AJ successfully defends her belt against Nikki. Paige is on commentary saying they're no longer friends and she's quitting the art of skipping. Uh, but not oh before... God. Oh my God. Did you see it? Nikki Bella's time stand still spot. The newest, worst submission in history. No. The Nikki Minaj, where she pushes... Is that what it's called? Oh, Pollock calls it. That's John, God, John that's Pollock clever. It, yeah. Nikki... Pushes her arse into AJ's arse, and AJ's against the ropes, and she starts selling it like it was a submission. Arse into arse. <laughs> What's it called? The Nicki Minaj. It's amazing. Uh, speaking of Nicki Minaj, I've known who she was for ages, but I'd never listened to her songs, ne- never watched one of her videos ever. Uh, I recently was told by lots of people just go on to YouTube, watch. Anaconda you will thank me I was like okay great Went. it's fucking great uh, have you seen it oh my god this woman is oh the first one she's yeah. fucking amazing looking like but then I found out uh, she has arse implants she wasn't happy with the size of her arse she wanted to have a bigger arse so she got fake arse that's gross devastating she's yeah devastated so it's time for our main event. Main event. Mean Gene plays it. I don't know if I'm adding music or not, but just oh, in case. Right. So it's our WWE World Title match. It's Brock Lesnar, the champion, versus Hideous. <laughs> Last month at SummerSlam, Brock Lesnar beat the absolute piss out of Cena and won without much comeback. It was oh, destruction. It was, it was wonderful. When is the last time that something that the Fed booked has just had you gone? Bravo. Well done. You knocked it out of the park tonight. Like It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, Cena was shown as not only vulnerable, but thoroughly outclassed. A 16 suplex deconstruction of John Cena. The death of Superman. Unlike Superman, who took a few months off. (laughs) Cena came back a week later and beat the piss out of the Wyatts. Uh, Mostly Bray. Poor guy. The storyline over the last month hasn't been great. But we did get a great Cena and Heyman segment together where Heyman was telling him to beat the beast. You'll need to become a beast. I turn heel, become a Paul Heyman guy. Which was great. It was great until Paul was like saying, Cena, if you want to be Brock, you have to tell his fans to shut up. And then he grabs the mic and goes, shut up, Paul. I was, Fuck this company. I was furious. <laughs> he did that. Just so afraid, man. They're just terrified to do anything with, with Cena. Anything else but Cena. Anything else, yeah. 
Uh, Cena's game plan of going Route 1 against Brock didn't work last time. Let's see what he's got on tonight. Michael Cole gets over that Lesnar has had two big-time matches this year, ending Taker's streak at Mania, which was a terrible match with an awesome finish, and killing Cena at SummerSlam, uh, if this will make it three matches and three routes. It's actually cool. Americans use the word route as well. That's, yeah. that's cool. My biggest worry is that Cena would win the title because the rumours beforehand were that he was booked to win it despite Lesnar uh, signing a new contract saying he can WWE can use them as much as they want. Yeah. Do you know who that didn't fool? The betting guy. Brock Lesnar was like minus 800 or something like that. It was like, he's going to win this match. But yeah, the, the rumours definitely had me nervous. I, I was getting ready to just my giving out finger was cocked like. <laughs> <laughs> so like if Cena wins then the amazing work done at Wrestlemania and SummerSlam would be undone at, at a B pay-per-view yeah. so Cena's new plan is no plan the same plan as last time just route one go straight at Lesnar punch kick build to a clothesline hopefully you get your finisher mm. uh, unsurprisingly it doesn't work but he does have more offense than at SummerSlam a good man, seeing it. He's still taking suplexes. They're all on his bloody shoulder and neck. Like. Yeah, I don't know if that's Cena just being terrible or if it's Brock Lesnar not taking care of Cena. Like Cena doesn't have to help him. Brock just throws him. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, probably Brock just <laughs> not fuck giving it. a shit. Whatever. Like, yeah. Um, there you go. There was one thing I really liked about this match was that Brock clearly told Cena just lay it in, buddy. I don't care. You can't knock me out. <laughs> And uh, uh, John Cena gave him one nasty elbow in the jaw. Fucking looked really painful. Brock's just, no, it's grand. Oh, he got the bloody nose, the, the Nelson. You made me bleed my own blood. <laughs> Cena doesn't have any neck problems, though, isn't it? He's like bicep and... It's all muscle, because yeah, yeah. he's banging the growth out of it, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> The speed of Brock Lesnar popping his hips for the triple suplex. He's a freak. He's incredible. This is faster than Eddie. Like, yeah. Know? And he rolls into a pin and the ref correctly refuses to count because he had pulled Cena's shoulders off the mat. Deadly. I like that. So Lesnar starts dominating Cena in the corner and then we get the amazing cunt thrust where he's like... Bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> <laughs> No one's mentioned it. It was like a flipped out one I saw. And the fucking uh, Young Bucks shouldn't have called their move after Meltzer. It should have been that. It was the five fucking star move. That would have been amazing. <laughs> so between the Nicki Minaj spot and the contrast, it's like some, some whopper moves over the last <laughs> few days. Uh, we need both guys to hit their finishers and kick out to get the match started. And they do. So the finish sees Cena's Route 1 actually works. He ends up doing four AAs in a row and goes to pin Lesnar. And Rollins comes in and causes the DQ. So he hoofs Cena out and curb stomps Lesnar. And, oh my god, he cashes in his money in the bank. It's like, oh, I'm cashing in. And everyone goes crazy. But before the match can actually start, Cena runs him off and he hightails it. So the match never started and he hasn't cashed in. That kind of bugged me. It should have been Ambrose coming back out. Because wasn't that his vow? As long as I'm breathing, you're never going to be able to cash in that belt. Oh, sorry, that uh, briefcase. How did how do you feel about this? Hold finish? on. Wait a minute. Sorry, John Cena, are you fucking stupid? Uh, let Rollins win, and then you beat Rollins. Well, you have to wait the next month to beat Rollins. Yeah, then. I know, but like... he's That's how much of a face he is. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. It'd be kind of heelish to... Yeah, to... Well, I, well, I, intelligence. I, want, like. I want the easy match. <laughs> the intelligence. I thought it was a bit, like... I, uh, to be honest, I, I know this is a bullshit finish, that... Lesnar got out of jobbing. Cena got out. Oh, by the way, Lesnar actually, he he actually motioned to kick out of the fourth AA. So he wasn't murdered in yeah. the match. Um, he got out of jobbing. Cena got out of jobbing. They finished the pay-per-view. And Rollins got out of actually cashing in. So they've gotten through the pay-per-view without actually giving yeah. anything away. Um, so you might give out about it. But I, I thought it was highly entertaining, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. I flipped out when Rollins <laughs> came out and he was like, oh, I'm going to cash in. Uh, so I didn't feel chipped at all. Cool. I thought it was a fun, inventive way to BS the fans. 
<laughs> Although, I th- kayfabe-wise, I did think it was weird because the authorities' plan C is Brock Lesnar and their plan B is Seth Rollins and Rollins is trying to take it off Lesnar. <laughs> you know? And plan C is far more effective than B. <laughs> hmm. So I thought you would Triple H would have asked Rollins to not cash in until Cena gets the belt again, you know? Because at some point, Cena will be a 16-time champion. Tough shit. What do you think of Night of Champions? I thought it started off well. I enjoyed the like opening two or three matches. And I enjoyed the main event. And I hated the middle. Just a massive lull. It's like an average B show. Nothing special. Um, I don't even think it's worth a tenner. I actually agree with that. Like the first couple of matches are very enjoyable. The end was very enjoyable, but the fucking hours, hour and a half in between was oh that dragged like. And oh plus, I didn't watch Jericho Randy, so like that's probably the most boring that I skipped. It, m- it must be noted that like for the build up of this pay per view, three out of the last four Raws have been quite poor. Oh, yeah. And so TV didn't do this pay per view any favors. I'd say it actually hurt. Night of Champions, how bad the TV's been coming it up It was a one-match show, and the build to that match was strange because Brock wasn't really around, like, you know? It's Paul cutting promos. Hmm. And, you know, he, in my opinion, he's probably the greatest promo of all time, but it's like, I don't know, you still need that fucking fight, that, that build to really get people paying, like... It's probably a good decision to... Like, I don't think you should have put on Brock Cena because it's a huge match. So you shouldn't have put on Night of Champions. And you get to see they didn't really. They had it and they didn't have it because there's no finish. Yeah. See ya. Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell. Yeah, despite that... Oh, the disgraceful advertising. Just embarrassing. We did get some great matches. So, uh, thumbs up from me. I give it one thumb up. Where? The butthole. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So what happened on Raw, you ask? Um, Brock and Heyman, no showed. Still no sign of the Wyatts. Uh, Swagger tapped out Bo Dallas very quickly. Total Divas. Poor Bo. What's going on with this guy? They brought him up and it was like, I thought he was getting over, you know? Then they just fucking castrate him. And they're like, ah, oh, these NXT guys, they're not getting over. Of course they're not. Look at who you brought up and what you've done. Yes. But, like, he's a solid mid-card gimmick, like, mm. you know? He is great. Sorry, uh, another just aside, have, have you seen Kenta's debut match? Ah, uh, Tammy, yeah. He he squashed Justin Gabriel in, like, a mm. minute. There was one or two botches as well in there that I was like, oh, my God. All right, he'll kick his way out of it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, I love Kenta. He looks so small. Like, Justin Gabriel's a small guy in the fed, and he towered above him, like. My hopes are not strong. I'm just happy to see him. I hope they're very strong for Devitt. I think yeah. he'll make it. Oh, we got this the other Total Divas feud. Natty taps Summer Rae out with the sharpshooter. Brilliant. Um, oh my god. Summer Rae cut it like a 10 second promo. It was jaw droppingly bad. And I was like, you acted in a film? With that? Oh, Adam Rose and his bunny went over Heath Slater and Titus O'Neil. Who is this bunny guy? Uh, rumours going around that it's Justin Gabriel. Really? Mm. So it's Justin Gabriel playing him. Is it going to be Justin Gabriel? It can't be. Ah, oh, Kurt Angle. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> I actually read that rumor and I had a good laugh about that. Mm. As if. Oh, someone got to it before me. Oh. As if. Um, ooh, Ambrose returned to action against Kane. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to take the DDT on both knees. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good shout at the telly when I saw that. <laughs> it was like, oh my god. 
Uh, and Rollins ran in afterwards, of course. And they trot out Cena versus Orton in their 20th singles match on WWE TV. Although, I'd rather have it on telly than on pay-per-view. Like, I just wouldn't watch it. No, I, I skipped a lot of Raw this week. I watched Raw in about an hour this week. Uh, Ambrose popped out from where the Sunder Blocks were uh, to be hidden. And then they had a big schmalls. Oh, the faces were triumphant. And Ambrose's music hits uh, as Cena wins by DQ. <laughs> That's a song. It's a car fucking revving like. Ah, because of all that driving he does. Yeah, and it goes... <laughs> over and over again. Mm, maybe Jimmy Smith will show up with him. <laughs> Ooh, uh, yeah, terrible, horrible edition of Raw this week. Oh my God, back to the stank like. Back to um, the stank. Oh, do you know who tried to get some free publicity out of Night of Champions? Dixie Carter. Really? Yeah. How? At Impact Wrestling tweeted after Night of Champions, while we like the iPhone 6, Samsung is also great. Angry with hashtag WWE NOC, you have options too. Hashtag Impact on Spike, Wednesdays at 9, 8 central. <sighs> it's... Bang, oh, desperation. <laughs> <off> <laughs> it's... Uh... It's, it's spraying out popular words <laughs> like wow. a dog pissing against the wall. Like, it's, what is that? It would be amazing if that was like all hashtags, like hashtag iPhone 6, hashtag Samsung, hashtag WWE, hashtag... Oh. It was, yeah. What was it? Yeah. Oh my God. I had to clean it up. I fucking hate Twitter. <laughs> you <laughs> want me to join it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see the point in it. So, a decent enough uh, pay-per-view, but... Is it worth 10 bucks? Eh, you know. Thank you, but of a Raw. Yeah. And you got bloody all of the rematches on Raw, minus the main event, so eh. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the pay-per-view. Next episode coming out is December to Dismember, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks. So uh, join us, facebook.com forward slash OSW review for that. So uh, it's a goodbye from Steve. Take care. Whoa. Y- yeah, you see? <laughs> oh, I tried to push off now. Take a boo. <laughs> and I'm myself, Jay Hunter, and remember... As far as I'm concerned, I have no sister. I wish you died in the womb! <laughs> <laughs> nice. A winner is you.
of the superstars in the ring. Let's break it down. Kane is a former WWE champion. The Great Khali, a former World Heavyweight Champion. Big Daddy V right now, arguably the most dominating force in all of WWE. And Mark Henry is without question, that's not just a marketing slogan, the world's strongest man. Uh, looks like the three monstrous men pointed out Kane. Maybe uh, to try and get rid of Kane. Maybe there's a game plan between Henry, Big Daddy V, and, and Khali. If that's the case, then Kane doesn't stand a chance. Oh, what any more of them. Oh, wait a minute, some bad blood here now. Big Daddy V and Mark Henry, here we go! Well, that alliance has certainly broken down, and here we go, fists are flying, boom! Like the irresistible force meets the immovable object, watch out! 900 pounds colliding in the center of the ring, here we go again! Oh, Did our table just move? This building almost hit Montauk. Gotta be kidding me. God. It's like a car wreck right on the LIE. Look at the size of these monsters. Unbelievable. It's like two tanks hitting each other. Uh oh, whoa. You know, Kali and Kane, they hooked up at WrestleMania 23. And Kane's got a score to settle with the Punjabi Nightmare. Hey, listen, man, this, this simple rules right here. Over the top rope. Each man gets thrown out, the last man standing more or less is the winner. Over the top rope, both feet hit the floor. It's a four-man battle royal who put together more weight than or, or, the usual oh, ten man. Oh, look, look at this! Look at the power of the world's strongest man! God is a monster! Mark Henry's so powerful! Oh my god, what an uppercut! Keep it up, keep it up. Kane throwing those big soup bones. The dangerous and dark big red machine. Uh oh. Oh, wait, wait, Big Daddy V. Big Daddy V looking to manhandle Kane. I'd like to point out right now that, again, this is a great example of the working relationship between ECW and SmackDown as Kane, Mark Henry, and the great Kali are all representing SmackDown. Big Daddy V is the only official ECW superstar in this Monster Mash Battle Royal. There's only one place to do a Monster Mash Battle Royal with these four bohemians. This right here in ECW, baby, live on Sci-Fi. That's how we roll. What better way to spend all Hallows Eve than with four man monsters in the same ring at the same time? It's like Battle of the Gargantuans. Who's going to go out first? Who's going to be the last man in there? It's like watching a real life monster movie. Malachi crunch, but, but Kali caught the point of it too. Mark Henry never saw it coming. Big Daddy V getting that 485 oh. pounds moving. We talked about it. It's oh. amazing how fast Big Daddy V moves for a 500 pound. Oh, Big Daddy V, he couldn't even stop his own momentum. He's so big. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this, Joe. Look at Kane trying to get Big Daddy V out of the ring. Look at the power of Kane. Oh, this my pick is out already. Pick is gone. Big Daddy V has been. Compressing the skull of Kane and now compressing oh, oh, oh. the skull of Mark Henry. Oh, oh my God! Kidding me? Oh, see that punch? Well, well, now we're down to. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Oh, he's out! Kane's out! Both gigantic feet hit the floor. Now we're down to two men. The world's strongest man, Mark Henry and Kane, who met last Friday on SmackDown, and Mark Henry took it for payback. Mark Henry, oh, nowhere for Mark Henry to go. Kane in the corner tries to decapitate him. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Kane get him off. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Henry weighs 395 pounds. Yeah. Kane with everything he's got. Yeah. Well, it's not just that, Joe Kane. Uh, I'm sorry. Mark Henry's got such a powerful lower body. He keeps his weight low. Oh. on the ground. It's tough for Kane to get Mark Henry's hips above his own. Oh. What a boot weight and a mush weight of Mark Henry. And that Going up to the outside. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh-oh. Kane can fly when he wants the big red machine. Oh no, got caught. Oh my god, the power of Mark Henry and just like that. You gotta be kidding me. Here's your winner, the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Mark Henry wins the Monster Man Battle Royal. What a display of power by Mark Henry Kane goes over. Again, and you gotta give credit to the power, the world's strongest.
Jewish man, the power of Mark Henry. It oh, looks like a belly-to-belly suplex, per se. Up and over, it's exactly what it was. He weighs over 300 pounds, and you would never know. Impressive, Mark Henry.